record. Yeah. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for Christians in Iraq. They are in a very difficult situation. Let us pray for peace and justice and for all those who suffer because of their faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, tonight we uh, say a word about material logic. <coughs> in fact, a part of that was already studied in the introduction. When I introduced you, we studied that. But uh, I give you the essential here. Uh, it is useful because those concept will be used in the future. So, you know, anyway, we have to learn that. <coughs> so the problem is the problem of the universal. Uh, we saw that uh, we have sensation, we uh, attain concrete, material, singular object, but the object does not enter my mind. It is a sign, a formal sign, uh, the phantasm for uh, sense, sensible. This was a key. <laughs> sensible, express species. I mean, uh, the similitude of the thing, sensible, and that means uh, uh, and singular. This dog, my dog, uh, my car, my house, or the house I saw, etc. Uh, so that is the fun. And that enter my mind, in my mind, I have an intelligible express. Species, species mean picture, uh, image, uh, image. That is the phantasm. No, excuse me. That is the concept. Phantasm. So I represent in my imagination the thing I saw in the absence of the thing. It is a sensible express species or phantasm, or similitude. No? And if I universalize that to every cat, every dog, every kangaroo, I have a concept. A concept, it is an intelligible express species. I express to myself what is a dog. No? I have the idea of what is a cat, what is a, uh, an animal, a bird, etc. Okay? So we have three acts of the intellect. What is the matter? In fact, material logic. It is what we study. What is the, the, uh, the you know, when we study man, for example, in philosophy, we study man at one aspect, uh, the aspect of the ultimate causes. But we can, we can study man in their biology, we can study man in business, we can study man in sociology. So we can study the same object at different point of view. So the different point of view is the formal, but the object is the material. So what is the material object? A first apprehension, it is the universal. So we come on that, the predicable, the categories of predicament. It is the, the subject of tonight, categories, and next week we study predicable. We study the judgment, and judgment, we, we judge after the first principle. In every judgment, we have to, to have a criterion huh, to judge. And finally, reasoning, demonstration, it is syllogism, we will study that. So here we have the three, the, the three operations of the mind. But, but we study that at the point of view of the law of thinking, the way we think. We can study that also in philosophy of man. I teach that now in philosophy of man. And when we study a, 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 a rational psychology in November, we study that. But that's at the same point of view. So that, in fact, we study judging a simple apprehension, judging a reasoning in logic. We study that in philosophy of man also. 
but the point of view is not exactly the same. If we have an analogy, we used to study literature. But in the seventh grade, you study grammar. And after you study the, the metaphor, the, the beautiful uh, expression of language, you know. But in fact, it is the same text. We can analyze, you study Latin, when you study Latin, you begin to, to, to make analysis and to find the subject, etc. But we can study Latin also for the beauty of the text itself. You know? So that we are doing. In logic, we are studying the grammar of thinking. Huh? The grammar of thinking. Now the universal. The problem of universal is very important because it is, um, it is there that the philosopher is uh, separate. And you will see that in a few minutes. Huh? So the universal, in fact, it is how we can explain, express the plurality of things, huh? multiple things, many things, in one in one uh, concept, in one word, one concept. We have many kinds of snake, many kinds of dogs, many kinds of uh, cake, huh? <laughs> many kinds, many kinds. And we, have, and we use always the same word, dog, 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 dog. For many very different, a big St. Bernard or a little bit wa 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 <laughs> uh, the same. It is a pocket dog or huge dog is a dog. An elephant is an animal and a, and a flea is an animal. Okay? So the universal, that is the problem. In fact, it is how we can conciliate the singular and the universal. The reality is made with singular. No? There is no universal in the reality. You never met on the street the man. You met, you met John, you met Peter. <laughs> no? okay. So the, the singular cannot be communicated. That means I cannot, say for example, man is, is, uh, is Francis. Man is Francis. I cannot say that. But I can say Francis is a man. A man you know? So the, the singular, singular Francis, cannot, cannot be applied to a subject. But a universal can be applied to a subject. Huh? So cat in general can be applied, but we, we cannot apply the, the, the singular to a subject. Huh? And by definition, what is a universal? It is to be communicated to many. For example, I have the word animal, or I can say, huh? bird is an animal, cow is an animal, dog is an animal, man is an animal, etc. An animal is applied to many. That is a universal concept. Okay? Now, I go to the next paragraph. In the history of thought, the term universal is used in three senses, three meanings. In the concept of being, that is the level of metaphysics, and the concept of being. And the causality and thought. Okay, so in the context of being, being, in, in, in Latin, you are not obliged to. I write that because Father Wallace write that, okay? <laughs> but if you can escape that. In essendo, esse is the verb not to exist, esse, to exist, to be. And the, and the gerundif is, or standard, gerundif, huh? For example, um, no, no Spanish understand that, huh? Um, give me a word, habla, 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 to talk, a talking, hablando, huh? hablando, generally. So, essendo is the way a thing exists, if you want, huh? the manner, the way a thing exists. Okay? So, we call that, the universal in that case is called essence. The essence. What is the essence? I spoke about that last class. Huh? Remember, nature, essence, definition, with no? It's not with you? You know, I gave a class in many <laughs> Okay, we talk about that. Huh? Essence is, I mean, it is what is the thing, not huh? the essence. What is the essence of man? It will be rational animal. Okay? And essence is opposed to existence. When we speak about essence, we oppose to existence. 
And that is the level of metaphysics, because metaphysics is interested essentially with being, huh? existence. But what exists, it is what? Huh? What? For example, rational animal. What? What is the man? Rational animal. But does the existence of man is included in the definition of man? No. We cannot say man is a rational animal existing. No. Man is a rational animal. Before the creation of man, man was a rational animal. And the universal concept in the thought of God, man is a rational animal. If man disappears, it will be for all eternity a rational animal. That means existence does not belong to our definition. Does not belong to our essence. Okay? So it's said to be universal when it possesses or can possess by many individuals on the essence. So in fact it is everything here is the definition. But the concept can be applied to many. But here it is in relation with existence, an essence, existence. The second level, in the context of causality, in causando, in the way we cause something, a cause is said to be universal when it is capable of producing specifically different effects. So the same cause can be applied Huh? Fire, for example, can be applied to many things, you know, that is universal as cause. Huh? For example, we use uh, fire to cook, we use fire to melt uh, metal, use fire. Huh? So fire is, uh, is used universally as cause. That means people know, if they use fire, they know what will happen. If you have soap, and the word soap, for example, soap. Immediately, with soap, you know, all the application we, we can do with soap. Huh? We can wash, uh, clean uh, clothes, clean hands, etc. wash floor, etc. Huh? So we know that the term is universal as a cause. Huh? Universal as a cause. And there is a third meaning in the concept of thought. And that is our context. That is the context of logic. It is the third, huh? uh, the third line. Uh, the third line is really for us. The two other are for metaphysic, huh? metaphysic. But the third is for huh? in significando to signify the way, uh, the way, huh? the concept signify. <laughs> so a concept, an idea, or a term. The term is the expression of the concept. Huh? is said to be universal when it signifies a certain plurality. When the concept, for example, uh, the concept uh, uh, life, uh, life is applied to many kinds of life. Uh, or the concept of fruit is applied to many kinds of fruit. The concept of vegetable is applied to many kinds of vegetable. A radish is a vegetable. A tomato, but we discussed that sometimes this is a fruit. Anyway, huh? a potato is a vegetable. Is a potato more or less vegetable than a radish? No. Is a, 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 an elephant more or less animal than a mouse? No. The concept animal applies exactly uh, to elephant the same way he applies to a mouse. Oh, yeah, the word sport. Huh? Sport. The word sport can apply to many kinds of sport. Huh? Hockey, baseball, soccer, tennis, golf, ping pong. Huh? All those are sport. Is tennis uh, less sport than football? No, they are sport. <laughs> I don't speak about the racket, huh? squash or ping pong, no. But sport is sport. It's physical exercises with competition, etc. You know? The definition is the same. It is a general word. It is a general concept. American. The concept of American. Huh? People who live in America. I am an American too. Don't forget. I live in North America. 
But you know, Americans are temptation to capitalize. <laughs> okay, American. Is Bo Obama more American or less American than Joe Blow, who stay on the, you live in, the, in Hartford? No. American apply exactly the same. Saint, the word saint, the concept saint. Is, it's a tricky question, huh? is the concept saint more, is greater for Mary than for Joseph? No. The concept is the same. The sanctity, that is different. But the concept is the same. Otherwise, saint will be an equivocal term. A universal term must be you need a univocal, not equivocal, univocal. Express exactly the same thing. A flea is an animal, a mouse is an animal, and, and, and uh, an elephant is an animal. And man is also an animal. And we are animal in the same manner, in the same, the definition applies. And if all the characteristics of animality can be applied to man, can be applied to mouse, can be applied to to elephant can be applied to uh, a flea, a bee. Okay. Uh, now I go to the next page. That plurality uh, to which is applied the concept can be two, uh, two uh, in two ways. Can be applied in two ways. First, by representing many. Well, it is what I told you just before. Huh? In representando. Hmm? For example, many individual men are represented by the single con term concept man. You are men, I am men. My little, uh, the, the, my little grand nephew is a man. Huh? The baby is a man. We are men, the same thing. Huh? That is uh, by representing many. A single concept or a single term uh, is applied to a plurality of reality. By, or secondly, by being predictable of many. Predictable means, okay, uh, you say this apple is sweet. So you, you see that is the subject, that is the, pre, the, the attribute, huh? but in philosophy we prefer to say the predicate. It is, but it is exactly the same meaning as attribute, same meaning. Predicate means to say, huh? to say, to share about the subject, okay? So sweet is, um, <clears throat> is applied to the apple. Huh? But it can be applied also to many, many things. It can be applied to a cake, it can be applied to a person, this person. <laughs> it can be applied to etc. The, 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 the adjective and the predicate can be applied to many. Uh, you, you are the, the, we saw that with the, uh, uh, if you say uh, a seminarian or priest, a priest can be applied to a Dominican, Jesuit, a diocesan, a clergy, a diocesan clergy, you know. It can be applied even to other religion. Huh? <coughs> so that is, huh? it is universal by its application. In fact, the second part depends on the first part. Huh? It is, a, 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 a <coughs> we explain the same thing in another way, okay? But the controversy, the problem, uh, if you study history of the Middle Age, it is one of the most important uh, discussion in the Middle Age is the controversy about the universal. We say in French, la querelle des universaux, the quarrel of universal. And it is very, very, very important. Sometimes, you know, we study history, we see, oh, we, we discuss only about uh, 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 friendship, <laughs> huh? detail, no? because they are very consequent. I will see that with you, the consequence of that. So we have a first, uh, okay, it is, a, it is a metaphysical discussion concerning the objective 
ontological status of essence. What is the meaning of that? That means if the essence, for example, the rational animal, is the essence of man, is something objective, is something ontological real. And what ontos means in, in, uh, in Greek, uh, being. Huh? Ontology, ontological is huh? something belonging to the being. Huh? Being or uh, ontos. Huh? So the problem is that. Is the concept of the term corresponding to something real or not to something real? Is the concept existing only in my mind or is the concept existing also in the reality? And that is central, central thing because all the problem will start from that. In fact, it is attached to the theory of knowledge. We studied that a little bit uh, last class and we will come back in, uh, in November on that. How we know? That means, are my concept Represent, are, they, are they representing a reality, or are they only in my mind, or are, are they outside of my mind, or have a value, or they don't have a value? That is the problem. Okay. So the, the um, uh, that they are perceived universal, uh, that are perceived universally by the intellect, and that are seen to exist in many individuals. So how we can explain that? Plato has a first expl explanation. It is explanation is called absolute realist tradition or absolute realism. Well, for Plato, he studied the history of philosophy, uh, the ideas are the reality. Uh, we have the myth of the cave. Huh? The myth of the cave. People are in the yeah, is a cave, and there is a, a, a door here, a, 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 a gate, and, and here there is a fire. Huh? A fire. And that fire illuminates pockets. Here we have pockets. And we see the shadow here on the earth. So the reality for uh, what we see on earth is the shadow of the idea. So the idea are, are real, and what we see is only the shadow. For example, we have justice on earth. But justice is only the shadow of the real eternal idea of justice. So the idea become real. Is the reason why we call that? Huh? We call that absolute realism. That means the reality is not in the material thing. The reality is in the idea. Okay. So for universal essences, huh? concept, idea have some kind of reality independent of the mind. Think about the myth, but the, you know, they exist in themselves. The idea exists not, not in my mind, not in the thing, exists in itself. Absolute idealism. Absolute. That is the position of Plato. The other position is a disciple of Plato, which I distorted. Aristotle, he said, okay, idea are universal, but the idea correspond to something real, objective, outside of me. So the idea is at the same time in the thing and also in my mind. You remember that, huh? The form of the elephant is in the elephant, but it comes in my mind. That is the position we call moderate Realism. It is adopted by Saint Thomas, not Thomas. Thomas, in the mistake here. So essences exist as individual in reality. The essence of man is the exist in reality in John, in Paul, in Socrates, in Plato. So there is a, a, a real existence of the essence in the real people. people huh? Okay. But these individuals, John, Plato, Socrates, etc., huh, possess a real basic in the reality. So that means the concept I have in my mind is not a pure invention of my mind. It is not a pure reality outside of my mind. 
it is in my mind with a foundation in the reality. That is the position of St. Thomas, the position I adopt, the position of Aristotle. We got re moderate realism. Okay? Well, if you don't catch that totally, we come back in November. But because it is in your program, I, I want to, to say a word about that. You have another current we call nominalism. Uh, if you don't have that uh, on your computer, I, can, I, I will send that to you. Huh? I have that on my computer. I don't think you have that on your computer. I will send that to you uh, during the week. Okay? So, uh, nominalism and the representing of that is Father William O'Kan. Hmm? He said only words are universal. It is also the position of uh, John Dewey, for example. Huh? Only words are universal. We have no universal concept, we have only universal words. For example, the idea of a cat, huh? the idea of cat is, does not exist. What exists is the word cat. And the word cat is used by many. Is the word. So they reduce idea to word. In fact, you have no more universal idea. Everybody has his own idea of what is a cat. And my idea of cat is not exactly you, the idea of cat you have. You see the consequence of that? No more majesty real. No more authority to interpret the Bible, the ethics. Here, it is the root of Protestantism, come from that. The root of Protestantism is nominalism. Because if you reduce knowledge only to word, there is no more universal truth. Everyone has his truth. And the consequence of that is relativism. Everyone is right, because everyone has the interpretation of word. what is a cat, what is justice, what is abortion. And that is the philosophy of democracy. Democracy is based on that. Tolerance, tolerance, John Locke. In very serious consequence, huh? Apparently, that seems nothing, but very serious consequence. If you don't accept a universal concept, a universal uh, uh, magisterium, a universal definition, what is justice, what is, uh, uh, what is uh, just wage, etc., no magisterium, huh? which is the definition of dogma, that everybody will interpret the Bible, is that uh, exactly what Protestants the philosophy, in fact, in, in, uh, in, uh, in Protestant theological school, there is no philosophy. Because to have philosophy, you must have a universal concept or something. Huh? Mm -hmm. So they go directly to the Bible. And they interpret the Bible. And each one interprets the Bible under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That is Protestantism. We apply that not to society. And our society is based on that. The minimalism. There is no universal. You know the problem of Catholic? It is we want, we are convinced of the value of universal concept. It is in our faith. We believe that there is a magisterium in the church and we know what is abortion, what is respect of life, because we accept. But if you don't accept magisterium, if you are a nominalist, I am okay, you are okay. So how we can decide that abortion is good or not? The number 50 is one. That we call the general will. That idea comes from Jean-Jacques Rousseau in French. You see, the expression of the, what makes the truth, what makes the legality, what makes, it is the general will, 50. And now it's worse because the minority now impose its value to the majority. We don't respect that. So, well, in the parenthesis, to see, to show you how the import, uh, uh, philosophy is excessively important. Sometimes, 
for many years, I thought philosophy was a waste of time. Now, after 52 years of teaching, I think it's important. <laughs> At least to have a job, to work. <laughs> no, man. You know, I, I, I teach it for social ethics. I teach uh, social ethics and uh, respect capitalism, communism. All those systems are based on philosophy. And capitalism is based on nominalism. The source of capitalism is nominalism. And nominalism, protestantism, capitalism, relativism, all that go together. It is in the country, in Canada it's the same. In the Western world now, we take that as an absolute. We should look at the limit of those things. Maybe I scandalize you. <laughs> but I say democracy is a lesser evil. The best is Plato. I don't say Fedor Michel de Wesch. I quote Plato. Is the government by the best? Plato says that. And he was opposed to democracy. He was opposed for that reason. Because in democracy there is no universal idea. So who's the best? The best are the philosophers. You can read that in the book of the Republic 5. Very interesting book to read. <laughs> you will see Plato was very, very in front of his time. Huh? He, was a, he was a communist, a real communist. He put everything together. Huh? All wives, all children. <laughs> but he, he said, no, democracy cannot be good because people in the, the, the democracy, we, we don't arrive to the truth. We arrive only to opinion. And that was written 350 years before Jesus Christ. And today, we live in that. If we, if we want to impose that to other countries, big mistake. And we see the consequence of that now in Iraq, in every way. Conceptualism, another system. It, universal terms signify universal concepts that are mentally constructed but correspond to nothing in the reality. Okay, you have concepts. Your concepts are universal, but they are only there. They have nothing touching or linked, linked with the reality. We call that conceptualism. Like mathematics. In fact, mathematics are in that section. Huh? You can work in mathematics without any relation direct to the direct relation to the reality. So we are in the fourth position. I, I, so the one we adopt is that the proposition of Aristotle. Huh? In that proposition, we we can arrive. We accept the capacity of a universal truth. Universal truth. Therefore, universal magisterium. Universal faith. It is only the Catholic faith, uh, among Christian faith, with a magisterium like that. The Orthodox have that also. They're not so strong that we have, because we, we, we have in a, a philosophy which recognizes the capacity of man to attain universal idea that correspond to the reality. And we see in Latin, con fundamento in re. Huh? with fundamental foundation fundamental in re in the reality re, reality thing thing rise okay now uh, number seven point four intellectual concepts are obtained by abstraction so we saw that I, I explained that last week I will not want to come back I will say only a word about the three level of abstraction. In fact, when we abstract, we put apart something, we put aside something to consider only one thing. The first level is how we put aside the individual singular character. For example, we, I, put, I, I, I want to arrive to, as a scientist, to define what is a cat. So I will not speak about this cat or that cat, your cat, with her or with cat, no. I try to find the physical, sensible cat qualities of cat independently of this or that cat. That is the first level of abstraction. No? Is to take the intelligible no, form from the sensible. 
So in physics, what we study, uh, for example, you study the dilatation of metal. Uh, dilatation of metal. But when you study the law of dilatation, it, it can be any kind of metal. Uh, any kind, but it is metal, it is sensible. You know? So you, 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 are, you are still in the sensible domain of knowledge, but you are not in the individual domain. Uh, you don't deal with individual. But you start from sensible experiences, but not this experience or that experience. Okay? So in, in physics, we continue to take care, uh, to consider the quality, the quantities, the, 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 if it is cold, if it is, uh, if it is yellow, etc. Huh? Okay? For example, uh, uh, fever. Look at the concept of fever. Well, Fever, it is something sensible. And the sign of fever, it, for example, it could shake, huh? shake, uh, to be warm or cold. Well, that is fever. Is that your, the fever if you saw in your son or you have? Or, no, fever is universal. But it is singular. It is a sensible. That is the first domain, the domain of science. The second domain, the second level, is the domain of mathematics. In mathematics, we put aside all sensible. We don't speak about color, uh, warm, uh, cold, uh, demand. No, we, we consider only quantity. We consider only the dimension, the number, quantity. But we don't consider the individual. We don't consider, for example, uh, in the second grade, I heard that last week, and the teacher said, how many fingers do I have? You see, two fingers. Three, how many fingers do you see? Two fingers. Four fingers. Are you in mathematics? No. You are in the singular. But after that, the teacher make an... Uh, in fact, the, the teacher huh, was trying to make you abstract from two fingers the idea of Two. Uh, in the first level, she will write on the board two fingers plus two fingers equal four fingers. After that, four, two ten days plus two ten days equal four ten days. And after that, she will erase that and she will say. 2 plus 2 equal 4. Now you are in mathematics. You consider only the quantity, you don't consider the individuality, the color, no. Only the quantity. And finally, the third level, it is metaphysics. We put aside not only sensible qualities, we put aside quantity, we consider only one thing, existence, being. Being. In metaphysics, does not take care of the quantity, the quality, no, being. What interests existence? And that is the most important, no? to exist. If I don't exist, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, sensible as a datum of experience is exclusively singular. The intelligible is universal and abstract. So, from Singular, huh? from singular and, and a sensible, from singular and sensible experience, you go to abstract and universal idea. And that is the way Saint Thomas and Aristotle propose. Huh? So, from singular, sensible in singular reality, through abstraction, we arrive to uh, abstract and universal abs no. abstract and universal concept. Sensible, singular, this cat, they, those cats, here, any cat. All the cat 
since the beginning of the world to the end of the world for all eternity. When you will be in heaven, if there is no cat, you will, you will be able to discuss about cat. Even angels, I hope, they have the idea of what is a cat. Well, especially when they accompany us in our houses. Our cats and angels should do that. <laughs> because maybe he protects your cat also. Protecting your cat, he protects you against mouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and five. And the rest here, I will not explain that because it is exactly what I told you last week. But one thing, one thing. When we saw that our intellect, remember that our. It's difficult to teach when there is no other sensation. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, our agent intellect patient here the phantasm. The phantasm is singular, sensible and singular. I illuminate that, that means I abstract and I have a concept, universal concept. Here there is a, a thing and the father uh, father Water speaks about that. I think it is important for you too. Uh, to, to, to know that. You know, if I come back to the comparison with the slide, huh? you have a slide, and you have a screen. If you want to project the, the slide on the screen, you need a lamp. Huh? You need a lamp, and the lamp will send up. But you need a screen. You need both. You need a lamp. You need... You need a... Uh, a slide and you need a screen. So the lamp, it is the agent intellect. The screen receiving, it is the patient intellect. And the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the, the phantasm, the slide is the phantasm. So what is the most important? That like most important. We know, we need, for example, you are writing. You need a pencil. Who writes? You? Does your pencil write also? Yes. Both of you, you are writing. You are a, a carpenter. You have an armor to fix the nail. Who is fixing the nail? You. Who is fixing the nail? The hammer. Both of you are fixing the nail. So here we have the presence of causality. Huh? And that, that is, it is important for, for, for many, many reasons, but that will come to, to the future. The agent is the principal efficient, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, principal efficient cause. That means if I have, even if I have the slide, if I have no uh, intellect, I cannot have a concept. Okay? But I cannot have a concept if I have only an intellect. My intellect must be fed through, through uh, experiences. When you are a baby, you have the intellect. But you don't have experiences. You have to acquire experiences. And from those experiences, you will a day abstract what is a cat, what is a spoon, what is a, a car, what is a dog, etc. Huh? So, and, and the, the slide here, the phantasm, the phantasm is the instrumental efficient task, instrumental. Like my chalk here is my instrumental efficient cause. If I have no chalk, I cannot write. But now I can write. <laughs> <laughs> and all those chalk will write with me. No, not everyone, but in the future. Yes, that chalk cannot write by itself. The armor cannot fix by itself. But I cannot fix but without the armor. I cannot fix, I cannot write without that. So, but one is the principle 
uh, the writer, you are the principal, and uh, efficient gas, but your pencil is an instrument of efficient gas. Or you have an organ, you have a piano. Who plays? The pianist. Okay. Does the piano play also? Yes. And it is it so true that we say, oh, that piano plays very well. But nobody is there, you see, he plays very well. He plays very well as an instrument. And the pianist plays very well as the principal efficient part of the music. But you, you can say, hey, come and play. And you know, sometimes some, you see some musicians, they play on the table. And they, they, they practice their, they, 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 to make exercises with their finger, gymnastic, they play. But there is no music, why? Because there is no piano, there is no organ. Huh? We need both. We need huh, the intellect, and we need the phantasm. And the intellect receive is active and is passive. In fact, it is the power of reflection. We can reflect on our knowledge. I can know that I know. Okay? No. And with that, I think it's, it's enough to, to uh, explain number uh, five, to, uh, or five or six, I don't remember which number you have. Father six and seven, huh? from uh, Father... Uh, now I go to categories, the chapter on categories. So if you read Father Wallace, number six and seven, with the explanation I gave you, you should understand that a little bit better. But I, I, I agree with you that to read that directly is not easy. Very difficult. It is very dense, very, very dense. And that is good for somebody who, after he studies in philosophy, now he, he makes a sentence. <laughs> so it's necessary for the teacher to explain that. Okay. Uh, now, chapter on categories. <laughs> in fact, we are in the first operation of the human mind. Simple apprehension. Huh? Grasping, the grasping of what are the things. Huh? The grasping, okay? So, um, what is the goal of our work? What is the summit of our study of simple apprehension? The summit is to make a good definition of thing. Definition. Uh, the summit is definition. In fact, if you study any science, you have to know definition and to understand definition. Uh, and any science. Okay? So, um, but we have two tools for, to create a good definition. In fact, when we, defi when we define, we are searching for what? For example, if I say this is, uh, this is uh, down the line. By the way, you know that it's funny, huh? Dan de Lion, in fact, is the deformation of French. Dan de Lyon. The tooth of lion. <laughs> tooth of lion. Maybe lion does not use the... <laughs> not yet. But in French, it's not very beautiful. P in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> is that Pisani? Yeah, people say that very fast. Oh, it is, you know, look at the beautiful Pisani. <laughs> when you look to the room, the color yellow correspond to a color mother know that when they have a baby. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but in English is better than the lion, the tooth of the lion. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so when I say this is 
about it, tell you about it. I want to know what is uh, the lion. Secondly, I want to know how dandelion is applied to this flower. How? So we have two instruments. We have what and we have how. What it is what we call the categories or predicament. It is the object of the class tonight. I think we have uh, enough to work up to 9.15. And how, for next week, it is what we call the predicable. That means the manner, huh, the manner a uh, predicate, how, uh, a predicate is attributed to a subject. So there are the two ways to create a definition. So we have to study that. Huh? Uh, predicament categories, uh, that means the division of being, and next week, how that predicate can be attributed to a subject. For example, if I say John is a man, John is a Catholic, John is a golfer, is man attributed to John the same way as Catholic and the same way as golfer? No. So that is necessary to know that when we give a definition. If I ask you, who is John? And you say John is a golfer. You say, who is John? You say John is the, the CEO of the company of a tomato incorporated. <laughs> who is John? John is a, a man. And when you say John is a golfer or a CEO or a man, it's not the same thing. The definition is not the same, the same value, the same level. Okay? So now let us go to predicament, huh? to categories. So the predicament are the content and the predicable are the manner, the weight. The manner, the predicate is huh? united to a subject, attributed to a subject. In fact, categories in Greek mean division. Huh? Division. We can say categories are like boxes. No? There are 10 boxes in which we put everything. And when you do that, you classify, you sort. Remember when you were a kid? We were kids. And we use our toys, and our, our room was a mess. No? Even sometimes, the, the <laughs> not only the room huh? was a mess, but did your but did your mother say to you, put order? And you have some boxes, some shelves, and you have to <coughs> classify to put that huh, in. So we, we, you, you are using categories. And you put together what is common together. Okay? So it is what we are doing. But we are classifying not, do not toys, we are classifying being. <laughs> and aspect, mo mode of being. That is uh, what we have classified. Why? Because every reality is being or mode of being. For example, I can exist, I can exist as a teacher. So as a teacher is a mode of being for other mission to go. No? So you understand the difference, huh? To exist and to uh, it, uh, being or a mode of being, a manner of being. Well, give you an example, your cat is black. Your cat exists. It is a being. But he exists as a black cat. Black is a mode of being. You know? Many, we, it can be, it, that mode of being can be action, can be passion. That are the categories we are studying now. We have to classify. Huh? Um, no, the more, the, um, so also called predicament because the nature of all material existing thing can be predicated. So predicament, predicated. If you go to Miriam Webster, the first meaning given by Miriam Webster is that meaning. But it's not the meaning of people on the street. A predicament for many people it is a, a discussion, a fight, a, a problem with others. But if you go to the real website, the first meaning is exactly that, what we have now. Huh? 
but is said about a subject. Predicare in Latin. Predicare. C'est dicare, dicere, to say, pre, apply to. And what we say about something. Predicare. So predicamen, it is, or predicable, it is a predicate, a something we can attribute to a subject. It is what is said about a subject, or the aspect of being attributed to a subject. The word, the most important here is being. How being is applied to the subject, or how mode of being is applied to the subject. In fact, predicate, predicated can mean also affirm, affirm, we affirm, or we assert, huh? etc., huh? about a thing. Huh? Okay. Categories are division of the existing material being. So, ten boxes on which I classify all material reality. Um, I go to the fourth line in the, in, the, in the rectangle. The categories of being form ten supreme genera. Genera is the plural of genus. In last class, we saw genus. It is the higher concept, the more universal, but the less precise. Animal, being, is very huge. Uh, unprecise, but very universal. That is a genera. Genera in English and French. Huh? Genera. It is the universal, very large. Okay? Under which we can classify everything. That means Aristotle discovered ten reality, ten uh, title uh, to put on ten boxes, and those ten boxes will contain all reality. All reality, existing reality, uh, or mode of reality can enter the boxes. And because of that, the title, the title of the box is a genera, and we cannot define them because there is nothing above. Uh, it is very, for example, being. <laughs> cannot define that. Huh? Okay. I continue. <laughs> um, well, we have the definition of Miriam Webster here. Huh? Number one, any several, any of several fundamental and distant classes, huh? classification, classes, huh? division, to which Entities. Entities come from Latin ends. What is the equivalent? Being. Huh? Being. Ends. Being. So we put all beings, huh? or concept, because a concept reflects a being, no? Where we said our concept corresponds to the reality, should express a being. Huh? It's a very good definition. If you go not, uh, uh, the word predication, huh? be. A predication letter B. The logical affirmation huh, or attribution, you can say attribution, predication, huh, affirmation of something about another. That means a predicate attributed to a subject. Huh? So the classification or categorization, the category means division. When you make category in the society, you hmm? have the rich, the poor, and the middle class. You divide on three categories. Category means division. It's the word, the Greek for division. Okay? It's necessary to arrive to a clear understanding. Imagine, uh, suppose a, a scientist asks children during the vacation to collect all the butterflies they can collect during their vacation, and to give him that at, in September at school. He will have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. What he have to do? Classify. Science starts from experiences, but those experiences must be classified. You must put that in different boxes. In Africa, we have a brother, a Christian brother. He was studying snakes. He was very good. He was able to take snake right that far. And the African, they were afraid, afraid. He was 
Yeah, in, in, in his uh, office, he has a, a series of bottles filled with snakes, any kind of snake. You must study. When you study snakes, you have to divide the snake. Not every snake will be in the same. I don't put a boa in the same bottle as a little uh, a green snake, you know? So, in, in, science, in, in science, you have to, have to divide to understand. Huh? It is my return, I saw that in one. Distinguish to define, to understand. Otherwise, it's the same when you study, we, we should not put everything on the same level. Some things are more important, some things are less important. They are important, but they are explanation of what it is more important. You know? It's the same in your budget. When you prepare your budget, you, you make some categories. Huh? A budget for the car, a budget for the insurance, a budget for food, a budget for vocation, a vacation, a budget for the children. And, and, you, and not everything has the same importance, I'm sure. I suppose the food has more importance than uh, your vacation. Okay? I continue. I don't want to do. Uh, to condemn those who go on vacation, it is unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> I should go more on vacation. <laughs> okay. Um, so necessity to put order in order to understand. Huh? It's the same. <laughs> I remember. Imagine you have a, a drawer and forks, knives, everything is. Huh? So what you do? You buy a kind of a box, plastic box, and you put knives together. You, it is rational, huh? rationality. Huh? Okay. And when you, you, you wash the, the clothes of your husband, huh? you don't put the handkerchief with the, with the socks, huh? and, and, and the shirt with the, with the, with the underwear. Huh? <laughs> and you classify. It's logic. Huh? logic. Why? Because we are rational. We are rational, so we classify. It is a need for us. Huh? Okay, I continue. So those categories are division of being. Huh? They are ten divisions of being. So that means we can, Aristotle, in fact, discover nine divisions of being. But in the Middle Age, the, the logician had added one category of being in the case of man. So I will see that in. So the ten aspect of the huh? now the, I go to the square, the rectangle, it's a, a second line. The ten categories are beings of second intention. Maybe I extend that, but I come back on that one. Intention does not mean good intention. Huh? I want to do good to you. No, intention here it is taken on the level of knowledge. Uh, intention, like attention, is this to tend, the, tend toward an object through my knowledge. So we have a first level of intention and we have a second level of intention. But you are in the second, we have the, the I don't know, United States, but in Canada we begin to analyze the, the, the Third or fourth grade. It's not the fourth grade. In fourth grade, the teacher said to you, um, this boy eats an apple. She did not say chocolate because it's not good for your teeth. So <laughs> this boy eats an apple. To write that, and to understand what the teacher wrote, you must know what is a boy. You must know what is an apple, and what is the action of eating. That is the first level. When you abstract what is a kangaroo, what is a corosol, huh? a sour sap, what is a, a lily, huh? you abstract. That is the first level. You have the idea what is a boy, you have the idea of what is eating, and you have the idea of what is an animal. You are on the first level. And a boy who goes to school is able to universalize. If the, the mother asks the boy to go to the kitchen and 
I take, uh, I need, I need uh, two knives and two forks. And the boy knows what is knife and his fork. He has the capacity, huh? Okay? But the teacher says, what is, what is boy? What is the function of boy? And you see, boy is the subject. She said, you know, boy is the subject. You see, boy is the subject. Okay. He is the verb. And apple is the complement of object. Is that we see in English? Complement. Did you study analysis? Never? You never studied that at school? Long time ago. Long time ago. Yes, of course, they have good memory. <laughs> okay, so the complement, huh? Or complement of object. Or because I don't know the terminology in English, I know that in Latin or in French, but the complement. That means the, the object, huh? the object here, object, complement the subject, true and verb. The verb is the act. The subject is doing the act, and doing the act, he attain an object, an apple. So you say, boy is the subject, eat is the act, and apple is the object. Subject act. When you say that, you are on the second level of intention. Second level. You are a superior level. You abstract what you already abstract. <laughs> it is abstraction at the second level. You know that not only the boy eats an apple, but you know that the boy doing that is the subject of the action, and the apple is the object of the action. Second level. In fact, when you study mathematics, you are on second level. When we calculate in, in science, we problem in science, we are on the second level. We apply a formula, it is on the second level. Mathematics is based on that concept. So that is second, first level and second level. So in logic, we are on the second level of intention. Grammar is the second level of intention. Grammar. So when the child writes, this kid eats an apple, he is a uh, first, first level of intention. He knows what is a kid, what is a boy. He knows what is the action of eating, and he knows what is an apple. But the teacher teaches him grammar and not our subject. You know, that is second level. You spoke English from the first day you walk, you talk. Not for me, I spoke French. Mm -hmm. And when you were five years old, you, were, you, go, you went to school at six years old, to kindergarten, you spoke English, and you observed the law of grammar? No? You, you said, my father's car. Huh? You said, you did not say, uh, those boy is uh, is six. No, you said those boys are six. You observe the law of grammar without knowing the grammar. It's the same in logic. You obey the law of logic without knowing the law of logic. But now, and now we are studying the law of logic. So we are passing from the first level to the second level. In fact, logic, I told you, is the grammar of knowledge. And now, in fact, of those reality, we are in front of us, then we are starting. Not only we know what is an apple, what is a tomato, what is a cucumber, but we know that if I say this cucumber is, uh, is green, huh? uh, I know the cucumber is the subject, and green is the color on the that is grammar, that is also logic. In fact, grammar is logic applied to language. And when you were in primary school and you begin to study the law of grammar, you, in fact, you were using your logic without knowing that. Huh? Okay? 
Um, I go now to general treatment, IA. So we will see first in general what are the 10 categories, and after that we will study one by one. And that study is important because we will come back on that when we study uh, when we study the data field. Because we study being now what are the level of intention, second level of intention. In metaphysics, we study the same thing, but the level of being. The same thing with karma, but not the same perspective. Okay? So, ten categories, the ten ultimate classification huh, uh, of sensible thing, or the ten basic group of existing thing, huh, or concept, because, you know, when we say thing, we can say or say concept, because the concept express the thing. Huh? We call that the ten Predicament, predicated, attributed, said of their proper subject. So here you have many ways to say the same thing. Huh? Okay. You, remember, you remark many times when I teach, I try to use all the expressions which are similar. Otherwise, if you stay only one and you read another in the book, you see how we got. So you have must know that there are many synonyms. Huh? Okay. A snow is white. White is the predicate huh, or the attribute of the subject. But that is so easy, you cannot say that the object is difficult. The object is not difficult. No, they leave those who say that. The is it's common sense. Like grammar, it should not be difficult because you know, when you study grammar, you spoke already in that language. Okay, every predicate can be classified. We start with all that. But I give you an example. Abakuk. You know Abakuk? Abakuk is a young, is a, a Jew from New York. Because Abakuk is not a, a work we find many times when we baptize children. But it was in the Bible recently. We read that on the on Sunday, huh? maybe you were the reading, reading that in your in parish. Huh? So Abba Cook huh, is a man, is fifth, six fifth feet high, huh? that is a quantity. Huh? He is a kind, a joyful, a strong, etc. Is that quality. Hmm? That means his being as a mode of uh, a mode we call quantity. As a mode we call quality. He is the son of a rabbi, the brother of three sisters. That is a relation. At present, he is, he is running in Central Park. He is running, action. But he is under the sun, beautiful day. He is, he is warmed by the sun, passion. Uh, and he is fascinated by the beauty of Central Park, etc. And now he is... Uh, you know, when we, we, when we run, we don't run like that. No, we are, so this position, huh? he is inclined, he is leaning, a little bit like that. Huh? He's not like that. Either. When you pray, you are on knees. That is a position. Or you are sitting, another position. Huh? So we call that position. Huh? The position of your member in relation with one and another. Huh? At what time? Seven in the morning. And he has a kippah, huh? a kippah, you know what's a kippah, the little hat, like, he has a kippah, yes. and he has three. <laughs> okay, here he is, a cook. Huh? Okay, so here is this a cook, and all those things are in a cook. Suppose a cook Stop running. Abacuc uh, cut his, uh, how do you say that? Braid? Braids. Braids. He cut his braids. He took up his kippah. He's the same Abacuc. So Abacuc is, he can say, I. I was in Central Park, now I am in Wall Street making money. <laughs> or I am in the synagogue uh, singing uh, songs, etc. So, what we remark? We remark something is permanent and something is changing. Look at yourself. 
I'm sure we have some picture of you when you were a baby. The most beautiful baby in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, everybody. Ah, what a marvel. <laughs> and now you look at you when you were uh, going to kindergarten. After that, you look at you when you were first communion. Oh, so pious. <laughs> a future pope, a future pope, <laughs> a future permanent deacon. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at you at your marriage. Huh? And you look at you after that 25th year of marriage, maybe, or more or less. What do you say every time about the, the, the person represented on the picture? Change. Change. You are not the same. So you are not the same. The baby was born in you, too different. So you are not the same the time you, 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 you married. So now you are no more married. <laughs> something changed, something is. Bad. Ma, and you say, hey, I was the most beautiful baby. I was so kind in kindergarten. I was so pious at first communion. I was so handsome at my marriage. I was, I said, I, 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 I. No. Is it the same I as when you marry him? Yes, I, I hope. <laughs> and you say, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> the same I, but I is continually changing. You know, scientifically, I read the article recently, and they said every seven years, all the cells of our body are renewed. So in my case, it is my uh, 11 body. <laughs> the other, um, I don't know what they are. <laughs> But I am, I am. <laughs> so what does that I? It is what is under the rest, uh, under the change, uh, under the quantity, the quality. Is that under we call that substance? Uh, the substance. Substance, starry, to stay, sub, under. Under all the change, when you were a baby, first communion, uh, graduation, marriage, 25th anniversary, etc., etc., your ordination as a deacon, <laughs> permanent deacon, all that, it is on you, in you. It is the substance. The substance is the being in itself. Huh? The being in itself. But your, your dark air, your gray air, your white air, your no air are in you. They don't are in themselves, they are in you. They are in another because that accident. Accident. So we have nine accidents and one substance. So we take a breath. Your uh, eye require a break. But when you come back, you will be the same eye. <laughs> but different. <laughs> <laughs>